body language tells us, you know, tells a thousand stories, right? It, it's like, yeah, it's just how, how you look and, and, you know, somebody walking down the street, you just instantly know without a, a single word said, you, you know exactly the attitude and, and, you know, and you're, you're also so right. Like parents can't help it sometimes. The and, intentions are good. Right. But the bottom line is it's not really good for that situation. So, so do you think it's because parents are putting themselves like they're, they're feeling like for whatever reason, if, if Jimmy isn't able to make the play at first, like somehow that's reflecting bad on them or, or why, why do you think that that dynamic of, of the parent, you know, where they're so emotionally invested at such a young age? Cause I, I'd love to know the answer to that question. Well, again, it's a product of where we are with technology. Um, it used to be, if you wanted to know anything about mechanics, you had to go to a book and actually read a book. Now that it's, you can go on your cell phone, you can find 17 different experts telling you how to do something. And the fact that this generation of parent uh, grew up in that environment and they realized that uh, success on the athletic field can do a lot of things. It's you know, how you perceived in the community. It could be a scholarship, it could be a, a signing bonus. When there's outcomes that are rewarded financially, or as far as you know, your status in the community, parents get invested for a whole different reason. And you know, you and I've seen we'll put little leaguers with big leaguers when they come to work with us. It, it's about getting out there and having a good time. I've got a picture across my desk where the Randy Johnson at six eleven is walking toward the clubhouse after a long day on the field of instruction. And this little six-year-old is holding his hand, looking up at him. Randy Johnson, I call it the kid and dog. Uh, authentic parents and coaches, kids and dogs love them. Yeah. If you're not authentic, kids will avoid you like to play. So Luke Collins was like the Pied Piper. If you can remember when we were all working up at USC, the kids followed Luke wherever he went. And this is when Brady and Breeze were actually on the field with him. They followed Luke because that Luke is still, that he just got married this weekend. He's still a 12 year old with a smile on his face. Absolutely. So if that, if that concept can be made clear to parents, it's about letting a kid be a kid. And if they happen to be good, that's awesome. But I'm going to take one more sidebar on you here. When we did the research, you'll remember this on Hall of Famers. Almost all of them, I think like 83% of them were late bloomers. So being really, really good, being an all-star at age 16 is nice, but nobody's going to remember that when they're 20 or 21. That trophy they got for being the best player on the team was nice to have at the time, but it is virtually meaningless five, six years from now. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, if I if I hear you correctly, basically what we're saying is, the most important thing for a, for a young athlete is to have fun. Say that again. My wife just walked by talking. Oh. And if, oh. if I can listen to my wife or listen to you, who do I have to listen to first? You got to so ask that again. No. Every, every time, listen to Marie. Just trust me. <laughs> okay. All right. So, you, okay. I'm, so, I'm ready to listen to you now. Okay, so so what I was saying is is if I'm if I'm understanding correctly, and again we could we could wave that magic wand at Tom House. We we tell parents is the most important thing they can do is ensure that their kid is having fun at Bingo. the ball field. The power of play, and play is to have fun. We don't call it working baseball; we call it playing baseball. And I think in today's world, with good intentions and all the best information and instruction capacity in the world, we lose sight of the fact that kids have to have fun. And you and I know this, I call it the terminal adolescence syndrome. Even the Tom Brady's of the world at age 45, they're just big 12 year olds. That's what it boils down to. And that's what keeps them passionate about the game. Yeah, absolutely. And, I, and, and we heard the same thing from Clayton the other day when he did his piece, he said, you know, when I stop having fun, that's probably when I'm going to start thinking about doing something else, you know, but even where he is in life, 
it's always been about going to the ballpark because he affiliates the ballpark with having fun. And, and, and like you say, like that's one of our basic human needs is affiliation. And so if we can create that affiliation around play, then kids will want to come back year after year. That's our number one priority. You, you and I have been on the field together probably a thousand times. Have we not, have we ever not had a laugh or two or had a good time? I can't think of one time where as a group, we didn't find something to laugh at. Even going back to world-class Frisbee, remember when you guys, you would compete? I mean, beat each other up, but laugh your fannies off while you were doing it. And are you the only one to be, beat Tim Tebow in world, world, world-class world Frisbee? Well, I don't, I don't know if I'm the only one, but I know that our team was a pretty darn good team. And I know that at one point, everybody else figured out if Luke and I were on the same team, they had no chance. Exactly. And where I was going with this, you know, everybody knows Tim Tebow and how hard, how hard he worked. Legendary stuff. But who had the most fun playing every day? You and Luke. And you okay. guys, always, in the long term, you, you guys always won. And I still get texts and emails around the country. And they talk about sun's out, guns out. And Tom, remember Tommy Vassella? Yeah. Absolutely. He's now a coach at Oakland University in Detroit, Michigan. He's a coach, math teacher. Who would have ever thought he, as goofy as he was, that he would end up doing exactly what we did, basically influencing kids and math, you know, mentoring kids to get better with their lives. So it's, it, what goes around comes around. 